Let's do 5 plus 2i plus 4 minus 3i. The only reason these parentheses are even there, ladies and gentlemen, is to show you that I have one complex number plus another complex number. Can you guys see the complex numbers? I know it's weird to you because this is new. That's one number. That's one number. Are you with me? Tell me what the real part is here. What's the imaginary part here? Negative 3 goes with the sign. What's the imaginary part here? Real part here. Check it out. Do you remember how, you remember, you remember? You remember how to combine like terms? How you combine like terms is you get rid of parentheses first, and then you combine like terms. Notice that we do have addition. I need to be very clear on this with you. Would you distribute this problem? No. Is it multiplication? No. Am I going to go five times four? Am I going to do that? No. No, don't do that. I'm going to give you a problem just like this on the test. It is the easiest ten points you're ever going to get, unless you distribute, and then you get zero points. Okay, know what addition means. Addition means, well, if there's nothing to distribute up front, I get to just drop the parentheses. How about this? Do the signs change inside of this one? No. So what this means is just plus 4 minus 3i. True? Yeah. Do you have some like parts? Yeah. Do you have real parts? Yeah. Do you have imaginary parts? Yeah. Add them. Combine them. Combine them like you would like terms. I know that 5 and 4, those are like parts. How much does that make? I know that positive 2i and minus 3i, those are like parts. How much is positive 2i minus 3i? Minus i. Can you combine these things? No. This is very much like, like terms. I know that i is not a variable. In fact, how much is i? You should all know this. Negative 1. No. Square root of negative 1. Yes, square root of negative 1. So what you have here is a number minus a square root, right? What you have here is a square root and a square root. They're like roots, as a matter of fact. This would be 2 root negative 1. This would be 3 root negative 1. That's why you can combine them. They're not variables. You can't plug anything in for i, but you can combine them as if they kind of were, because we did that with our roots as well. That's your answer. Kind of nice? Kind of nice. Let's try some subtraction. I'll give you a few to do on your own. Probably call it a day after that. Six i minus two minus i. All right. Well, let's talk about this for for a bit. Uh, firstly, recognize we do have two complex numbers. Everything's a complex number. What's the real part here? <coughs> Zero. The real part's not six. This is associated with the i. The real part zero. How much is the imaginary part? Good. What's the real part here? Imaginary part. I or negative i? Negative i. Goes with the sign. Can you tell me what's going to happen here? Just like combining like terms. You get the six i, sure. But what are you going to get when I distribute my negative? Negative two plus i. Wait, wait, wait. Why plus i? Good. If you forget to distribute that, are you going to get the right answer? No. So this, when I go, that's going to be a plus i. Now, I know a lot of you, that you like to do this. You like to see these like parts here. You like to combine them. How much is that going to be? Is it going to be 6i, 6i six squared, or 7i, or 7i squared? 7i. Squared? 7i. By itself. Are you multiplying or adding? Adding. Just like like terms. 6x plus 1x would give you 7x. True? Yes. 6i, 1i gives you 7i. Now, we do have to write these in appropriate order. So, is it going to be 7i first or last? Last. What comes first then? The real number. So, identify your real parts first. We have negative 2. This is 6i plus 1i. That's plus 7i. Negative 2 plus 7i. Okay, last one we'll do together, then I'll give you three to do on your own. We'll go over them very briefly, and then we'll, we'll be done for a day. Oh, what are you going to do here? 
distribute the negative to the second. Notice our two complex numbers. We have negative two is our real part, negative four i is our imaginary. Negative three is our real part, positive one i is our imaginary part. Are the signs on your first complex number going to change, ladies no. and gentlemen? Yeah. Someone on the right side of the room for me. Can you tell me what I should write here, please? Good, plus three, not two signs. You know a negative and a negative is a positive. And then what? Good. Follow me? Make sure you distribute those correctly. Make sure you get the appropriate signs there. Because now all you've got to do is combine some like parts. We do our real parts first. What's our real part going to be? Everyone. Okay? And then I have a minus 4i and a minus i. You're basically combining like parts here. You're going to get what? Minus <clears throat> Can't go any further than that. That's it. Okay, try a couple on your own. Let's do... 3 minus 5i plus negative 4 plus i. And that one. Were you guys okay on this example? Do you need another one like that or are you alright with that one? Very, very similar to, to these problems. Go ahead and do those. I'll give you about 30 seconds and we'll wrap it up. Hey, do any signs change on the first expression? Do I need to distribute and foil this? No. So 3 minus 5i plus, okay, negative, negative 4. What I could do here is just write minus 4. Do you see that? I could just write minus 4 and then plus i. So far so good? This is going to give you negative 1 Minus 4i. Raise your hand if you got that. Good. Next up, we do have to distribute the negative. Not FOIL, but distribute the negative. You'll get negative 5 minus 2i. You'll get plus 8 plus 4i. Did you get plus 8 and plus 4i? Good. Follow that sign. you got to have that. Our real parts give us 3. Our imaginary parts give us minus 2i, and now we can add and subtract, plus. I'm sorry, plus, thank you, plus 2i, we can add and subtract those complex numbers. Do you feel okay about what we talked about today? Yes, sure. Next time on Monday, we'll talk about how to multiply and divide them, it'll go very fast, then we'll start chapter 11 on Monday. Well, good morning, if you remember from last time, what we're doing here is we're doing a few things with the square root of negative numbers. We realized from last time that the square root of a negative isn't a real number, but is an imaginary number. It's a different class of numbers. And when we pair that together with a real number, we get something called a complex number. The whole idea is, can you put these roots into I form, and then can you do some operations with them? We've practiced I form a lot. We've also done the addition subtraction. We're going to get to multiplication division in just a little while. First, let's practice doing this problem. What I'd like you to do on this is make sure you put that I form before you do anything with it. So right now, take about five seconds. It's not hard. It doesn't take a long time. Put this in I form for me. So I form means you're getting rid of a square root of a negative number somehow. So let's take a look at it. Do we need to do anything with the 4? No. Okay, so I know this is just going to be 4, and this minus is still going to be a minus. All I'm asking you to do, to do is convert that root somehow. Now, what is the square root of negative 25? Is it a real number or an imaginary number? Imaginary number. Definitely, because it has that negative inside that root. What does that negative create? I. Somehow it's going to have an I. And if you remember from last time, I'll show this to you one time because we've done this quite a bit. You can refresh your memory on that video. But what we do, what we would do is with the square root of negative 25, we break that off and do negative 1 times 25. We split up the root. 
and we would have i times 5. We determined that, and we defined that the square root of negative 1 is actually i. And that's what we're using this as. So instead of i5, we'll have 5i, and that is called i form. Do you remember that from last time, ladies and gentlemen? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here, instead of 4 minus square root of negative 25, we're going to have 4 minus what? 5i. Five five. Five. Minus the negative 3 I can't do anything with, the plus I can't do anything with, but that square root of negative 4, how much is that? 2 over 9. Good, we take the square root of 4, square root of a negative, that's negative 1, that's going to be our i, so we get 2i. Notice how I haven't really done any other math besides changing that into i form. That's the whole idea. Make sure you get i form first, then go ahead and look at the problem that you have. So i form, very important, we're going to do that first. Next up, next up, oh, let's look at what we're actually doing. Are we adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Subtracting. And in fact, we have complex numbers now. Do you guys see the complex numbers? Yep. What's the real part of this complex number right here? Negative 3 and negative 3. Right side of the room, what's the imaginary part of this complex number over here? Negative 5. Negative. So it goes with the sign. Okay, good. Now, if we're subtracting, do I need to FOIL this? Do I need to distribute that? No, really, all I need to do is make sure this negative switches these signs, because we're subtracting them, just like combining like terms. We remember how to get those parentheses out of there. So we'll have 4 minus 5i. We'll have, what's, what's next? Plus, plus three, or minus? Three. That's okay. And then what? Minus 2. And after that, essentially what we're doing is combining like parts, very similar to combining like terms. Now, remember that, is i a variable? Is i a variable? No. How much is i? No, i is not negative 1. <laughs> Square root of negative one. Yeah, I can't have you say i is negative one because i squared is negative one. You can't have the same thing for both of them. So i is not negative one, but it's a square root of negative one. So what we're really doing here is we're combining a couple of like roots. These are the square root of negative one. That's why we can combine them just like a, a like term. And then our numbers are always like terms. So we'll combine our four and our three that will give us seven. We'll combine minus five i, minus two i, and get minus. 7i. And that's as far as we can go. The real part is 7, the imaginary part is negative 7i. We're done. How many will feel okay with the, the adding and subtracting? Good. Now for the rest of our time in this section, we're going to talk about how to multiply and how to divide. We'll talk about multiplication first. You know there's really only one thing that you need to know in order to multiply these complex numbers. Really, that's it. Just, just this right here. You need to know and have down in your head at all times how much i squared is equal to. How much is i squared equal to? If you remember that, and if you remember that every single time you see i squared, you're going to put what? If you remember that, then you're going to be finding multiplication. You see, here's what we're going to do. When we multiply, oh, by the way, if this is true, should you ever have any i to greater than the first power? Should you ever have an i cubed or an i fourth or an i? No. no. Because if you know this, you can always simplify them. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that in just a bit. But we're going to be multiplying, and it's going to look very, very similar to some multiplication that you've seen before. So let's say I gave you.